Here they are, the famed and fabulous corn cobblers, the band of a thousand gadgets and a million laughs, the band of whom the New York Post said, they're absolutely amazing, you ought to hear them. With a washboard, tin whistles, a few dozen auto horns, and a smattering of regular front-line instruments, they make the merriest music you ever heard. Here they are with Sweet Potato Polka. Someday he'd have wealth and fame. He bought a knock arena and practiced every day. Then Homer rode a polka, and now you hear him play. Oh, toot, toot, toodle, the sweet taint of polka. Toot, toot, toodle, the sweet taint of polka. Toot, toot, toodle, that's all you hear him play. Cause Homer bought an ocarina and played it for you down. members of the Corn Cobbler's Band are neither youngsters nor provincials. It has taken years and many miles of travel to bring together a tin whistle from a New Jersey dime store, an auto horn from a California junkyard, a set of sweet potatoes from a Chicago music shop, a washboard from a New York hardware store, and countless cowbells from the necks of contented bovines in pastures everywhere. And it's even more amazing when brought together, they can sound like this. Someday, somebody's going to write a book-length dissertation on the music and antics of the corn cobblers, and this historic volume will point out one of the most amazing corn cobbler secrets to success. It's not what they do when they play that counts so much. It's what they do when they don't play. The members of most bands sit out a two- or three-bar rest. Not so the cobblers. It's those two- and three-bar rests that give them a chance to make a graceful leap for instruments across the bandstand. Even when they play a lilting waltz, they manage to pantomime a Main Street rush hour.
You know, if you think getting a classic cadenza out of a chorus of cowbells is pure luck, you don't know about the Corn Cobbler's Research Laboratory. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned our cowbells, Alan. Oh, I wasn't thinking of the cowbells in particular, Stan. They're quite ordinary, aren't they? Oh, no, Alan. Charlie, the bass player, head of our gadget research department, has visited more dairy farms and cow pastures than any man alive just looking for cowbells. Well, every cow has a cowbell, doesn't it? It ought to be easy. Oh, well, we're particular, though. Charlie won't accept a cowbell unless it's genuine Gersey. And at least fifth-generation genuine, too. Well, thanks, Stan. I'm glad to know that Ding Dong's provided and Ding Dong Daddy from Duma are grade-A certified. That fact really should be in the program notes which describe the opus as the homogenized harmony of everything but the inevitable kitchen sink. <laughs> I'm a clean-cut fella from Hunter's Corners. You ought to see me strut. Well, I'm a keeper, cut, cutie, got a gown called Katie. She's a bit heavy late, but I call the baby. I'm a ding-dong daddy from Dumas. You ought to see me do my stuff. I'm joking when I tell you a toolkit is as vital to the success of corn cobbler's music as the bass, piano, clarinet, and sax. Amazing as it may sound, it's still the truth. What I can hardly believe is that every corn cobbler's gadget isn't in a complete state of collapse after a workout like that. Only because of stamina could they reappear and she was just the sailor sweetheart. <laughs> Just a sailor sweetheart, and she loved her sailor lad. But he left her broken heart, but he was all she ever had. And she still believes in sailors, cause she's true to the red, white, and blue. And although she's barred from the Navy Yard, oh, she loved her sailor boy positively. <laughs> much about sailor sweethearts, but I do know a lot about this. Uh. 